today I'm going to make a homemade pizza. So we're going to start with crust. I have a cup and a half of hot water. It's not microwaved. It's not boiled on the stove. It is just get your faucet as hot as it can and measure out some water. And then I have four and a half teaspoons of yeast that I'm just going to sprinkle over the top and let it sit for about five minutes. We'll come back, check on it. It should be bubbled up. If it's not, then the yeast is dead and we have to start over. So now that our yeast has bloomed and it's nice and bubbly, we're going to start adding our sugar. So I have two teaspoons plain white sugar. I have a teaspoon of salt and a quarter cup of olive oil. All I'm going to do is stir those together. And then add my flour. I have four cups of all purpose flour. And this is going to form a wet dough. I like this recipe because I don't need a mixer. I can't. I have a different recipe that I use a mixer with and it requires a lot of kneading and that's the long version. But our family skipped lunch today so they want the fast version. Alright. That's almost done. First, but before I finish it, I have two more tablespoons of olive oil that I'm going to drizzle in the bottom of here. Well, half of it I'm going to drizzle. Roll around in the pan so that we coat the bottom of the pan and the sides. And then I'm going to coat the top of the bowl as well. That way when the dough rises, if it hits the top, it doesn't stick to it. And then I'm going to finish the rest of this mixing by hand. You just want to get everything incorporated and make one big ball. And there we are. It's a little lumpy. That's okay. They'll come out in the rise. We're going to put the lid on and let our dough rise for about an hour. And then we'll be back. So our dough has been rising for an hour. And it is double in size. So now we're just going to roll it out. What I'm going to do is lightly sprinkle or flour onto a little cutting board. And then get my dough. Now, I'm not rolling. All I'm going to do is mold it into the shape that I want. Sprinkle a little flour on top. And then we are going to let it rise for another 10 minutes. While that happens, we're going to go make our sauce and our toppings for our pizza. So, I'm going to start with some ground turkey and I'm going to make a cheesy sauce. Usually I would go buy pizza sauce at the store, but I didn't put it on the grocery list this week and just decided this morning that I wanted to make pizza. And um, I don't make my own tomato sauce, much to my best friend's dismay, because she makes the best tomato sauce in the world. And once you've had hers, you really can't eat anything else. So. Long story short, ground turkey. I'm going to put on medium. It's two and a half pounds. Um, and then I'm going to add a teaspoon, a tablespoon and a half of Italian seasoning. And stir. I'm also preheating the oven to 550 degrees while I do that because I'm going to heat my pizza stone before I put 
my pizza crust on it. And while this is heating up, we're just going to brown the turkey. It does not, nothing fancy, just a little bit of seasoning. While this is warming up, I'm going to heat up the butter on this side. I've got three tablespoons of unsalted butter that we're just going to melt so we can make our cheesy sauce. Um, normally when I'm browning meat, I would add salt to it. But let me explain that my um, cheese sauce, because it has Parmesan and um, Colby Jack cheese in it, it's already salty. So if I add salt to the turkey, salt to the sauce, it gets to be one big salt lick. So we don't do that. Now to start our cheese sauce, we're going to make a roux. I've got that three tablespoons of butter. We're just waiting on it to melt. I'm going to slide the pizza stone into the oven so that it can warm up. If you slide the whole stone, if it's cold when you put it into the oven with the pizza on it, it doesn't get the crispy crust that I'm looking for. It's more doughy, which is fine for some people, just not me. turn this up just a little. Butter is melting. Butter is fully melted, so we're going to add our three tablespoons of flour. This gives us the roux we were looking for. Two cups of whole milk. our turkey again. All right, we've got about five minutes to wait while our while we wait for our, our turkey to finish browning and our um, milk to come to a boil. Okay, so my milk came to a boil a lot faster than I thought it would, and it's ready now. I'm going to add a cup and a half of Colby Jack cheese. And then I'm just going to stir until that melts. Now this is a pretty versatile cheese sauce. Um, I have used it as a pizza sauce. I've used it as a pasta sauce. I've used it as a broccoli sauce. Because if you can figure out a way to get my family to eat broccoli without cheese, I would love to hear it. And until then, we are sticking with cheese sauce to get them to eat. Colby Jack is melted. Now I'm going to take about a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Okay, that's more like three quarters of a cup of Parmesan cheese. I did tell you why we like cheese, right? No one complains. Alright, 
we're going to reduce this down to simmer, which is really low, and then tend to our turkey, which is almost done. And then, once our oven is preheated, we will be ready to make pizza. So with our pizza, pi um, pizza stone in the oven heating, um, our oven is at 525 degrees. I'm going to take and start assembling my pizza. I'll start with cheese, my cheese sauce, and you can use whatever sauce you want. Pizza is a really versatile thing. We have made pizza where we put black beans at the bottom, taco meat on top, and cheese. Cheese is an essential. Alright, so let's get a little more on this little part of the crust. You want to leave about an inch on the outside of the crust that does not have sauce. And then I drained my turkey in a colander in the sink. Now I'm just going to take it and sprinkle it on. And it is still hot, so be careful. Two cups of Colby Jack cheese. I know I mentioned we really like cheese. And I'm going to take just a sprinkle of Parmesan. And you can do this in any way that you want, any format, any amounts. You don't have to do what I do. This is just an idea to get you started. Now I'm going to get my pizza peel, which is a long handled wooden pizza thing. I need to get some cornmeal to put on it so that it slides under the pizza and slides off of the pizza when we put it on our stone. So the same cornmeal that I use for making cornbread, I'm going to use here. I'm just going to sprinkle a half of a tablespoon onto my stone. Mush it all around. Then we are going to slide it. Well, we would slide if it, this pizza dough slid. All right, we might have to do this a whole different way. I think I loaded the pizza too much. Alright, we got it on. Let's see if we can get it off. <laughs> We're going to come over and open the door to the oven and slide our pizza onto the stove. It's not the roundest pizza, but it's going to be good. We're going to bake this for 15 minutes. Okay, 
so when I first started the pizza crust, I didn't put enough flour on the bottom. Um, if you're worried about it, you can also put a piece of parchment paper underneath that'll make it a lot easier to move it around. But our pizza may not be a perfect circle and it's not round like it was, but it looks super yummy. And it was done in 15 minutes in the oven and we're ready to cut it and, and get down to dinner.